Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trucking Tower podcast. I'm very excited to be joined today by Josh Mecca, who is Director of Recruiting at Grammar Logistics. How are you doing today, Josh? I am doing well, and thank you for having me on the show, Andy. Absolutely. You know, it was fun talking with you offline. I was looking forward to having you on the show with me. And to kick things off, I'd like to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Fleet Drive 360. If you would like to gain back 30% to 50% of your time involved with driver hiring, onboarding, document management, and drug and alcohol testing, please be sure to click on that link below. So, you know, Josh, you and I, we had a chance to talk offline about some things happening in the trucking industry, and uh, we're going to discuss a key topic today, using driver feedback to improve operations. I think this is a really key topic a lot of our audience is going to want to know more about, and there are some really key things you should do in working with drivers to improve operations for the months and years ahead. But just first of all, I'd like to go back kind of all the way to the beginning. So how did you first get involved in the trucking industry? So it's uh, it's actually kind of a, a fun story. I When I went to, to school, I had this uh, crazy idea that I wanted to be an attorney. Um, and through there, went down the political science route, had a great college internship at the Department of Justice. And after school, I went to work at a private law firm, um, working on the, the records and the billing and, and some of the administrative side. And in there, I realized that it's just it's just not for me, um, not uh, not not designed to do that. So um, I answered an ad, um, didn't really know much about the company or anything, but it was all about contracts and rating and i knew math and i knew contracts because I, I had spoken the legal the legal language for a while and um 17 years later here i am so went to went to work at a company out of uh, south carolina and i uh, slowly migrated my way back home here to kansas city very nice yeah i'm in oklahoma city i've been to kansas city many times you guys have some awesome barbecue oh we do we do it's just <laughs> like candy Man, it is so good. Um, you know, and I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, you had visited the White House and it was in conjunction with the trucking action plan you were telling me about released by the administration. Can you tell us about that trip? Yeah, that that trip was was phenomenal to to be there, walk through the White House, uh, spend a couple hours on the, the White House lawn there on a just a perfect day in Washington, D.C., uh, it was definitely a moment that I'll I'll never forget in my career, uh, but it, it's it was there to to it was a ninety day follow up to the trucking action plan, and in there are a couple of key components that I think anybody listening to this podcast would relate to most, if not all of them, um, as some pretty major challenges that our industry faces. Uh, the biggest piece of it is all about apprenticeship. Um, apprenticeship is key. Uh, we've got to have properly trained drivers out there on the road, keeping keeping uh, the highway safe, keeping the motoring public safe, but more importantly, uh, proper training means that they're gonna be more likely to get back home to their families um, instead of just being thrown out there in a truck that they're not ready to control yet because of, of lack of experience or situational awareness. Um, but the apprenticeship programs really do a phenomenal job at accounting for um, you know, the, the training scenarios by giving proper time, proper training, and help with proper compensation um, to help people who want to be in trucking stay in trucking. Um, it's a great career choice. And just, you know, unfortunately, I've seen too many careers cut short because of, of improper training. And it's something that's critical to our nation and our supply chain to make sure we have that next generation uh, trained up and ready to go as we start to see you know, some of our, our more experienced drivers start to retire, uh, call it an over-the-road career, uh, medically disqualify, you know, those things that that make us, you know, finally hang up our keys and take our last load. So we definitely need a viable career path for those that come after us. So that was the big piece of it. Um, there was also uh, some announcement on the Women of Trucking Advisory Board where they've hit several of the key uh, ladies in trucking leadership that have all pulled together to form an advisory committee uh, to help us with the the challenges that they face. You know, some of the things that you and I would take for granted and we don't realize because we don't have to deal with some of the security issues that our ladies out there do um, or restroom issues or some of those basic life uh, necessities um, that our, our ladies have that additional challenge of being on the road with. So there's a lot of good movement there. Um, 
talked a little bit about a trucking leasing task force to help uh, combat some of these predatory truck leases that are out there. There's a lot of good leasing companies out there. And I don't, I don't want this to, to sound like there aren't because there are several good uh, leasing companies, but there's unfortunately those of us or those uh, companies out there that do uh, tend to take advantage of people that are kind of stuck in situations. And so just a way that we can explore those and see what we can do as an industry to help, again, keep people in trucking that want to stay in trucking, right? Um, and then the, the rest of these are really kind of tied around just those nuances, it's those, just the big headaches that I think we're going to talk a little more about later on in this podcast um, with detention time. You know, detention time is not good. Nobody likes it. Everybody hates it. Right. Uh, it's a big... I call it a stubbed toe moment in trucking because you stub your toe, you're going to remember that, you know, eventually you'll get over it, but it's still going to hurt for a while. So how do we get over, uh, get past, how do we become more efficient at our shippers and our receivers and those other things that cause our drivers to lose efficiencies and that ultimately leads to, to lower paychecks, right? Right. Um, there's a, a driver compensation study. Let's make sure that companies out there across the board are paying drivers for their time. You know, we've, we as an industry have historically paid on a cent per mile basis, which, you know, right, wrong or indifferent. That's just the, the way that that our industry has always gravitated toward pay. There's there's got to be some sort of motivator. Miles are a good motivator. Um, but there's other ways to look at compensation to make sure those drivers stay whole for their time that they're spent away from their family uh, when they're out there, you know detention you know you get stuck at a dock all day you've lost a day's worth of wages and you can't get that back as a driver so how do we as an industry um, uh, address that there's some uh, discussion on the safe driver apprenticeship pilot uh, making sure that as we uh, start to target those 18 to 21 year olds again a hot button topic for a lot of us um, how, how do we make sure that again the tr the companies that um, are training the correct way are training those 18 to 21 year olds you know the the good side with them is you know they're younger they should have a longer career because you know again they're younger um, but on the flip side they don't have the actual driving experience yet that a normal 21 year old you got three years of having just a regular driver's license those different road experiences how do we how do we combat that? Um, and then finally, some additional funding that was going to go out to the states, uh, I believe is a $30 million grant that the FMCSA was sending out um, to help streamline and speed up drivers getting uh, CDLs, getting renewals, getting through the DMV faster. How do we how do we hit our databases a little bit quicker? How do we do those things? Because, again, coming out of COVID, we saw a lot of, of the state DMVs that shut down um, and we had to get them reopened. We had to be able to get those appointments uh, there were a lot of waivers put in place because drivers could not physically go in and renew their CDL. So how do we, how do we get those those licenses renewed? How do we ensure proper credentialing, um, and make sure that we have everything lined up and ready to take care of these guys, these these men and women as they get back on the on the road? So those are the key components. Uh, I know that was a lot, um, but it was just a, just a phenomenal afternoon out there, um, looking around with several of the the, the key leaders in trucking. Um, on the, the White House lawn was was definitely a moment that uh, I'll never forget. Absolutely. Sounds like there were a lot of key components being worked on and discussed during that uh, time, for sure. And, you know, trucking is absolutely vital to our economy. And reading from the White House article that you actually shared with me, I want to quote something here. So it said, 72% of goods in America are shipped by truck. And in most communities, trucks are the only form of delivery. A strong, stable, and safe trucking workforce that offers good paying jobs to millions of truck drivers is a critical lifeblood of our economy. We would be in a world of hurt without our truck drivers, wouldn't we? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think the stats are, you know, if, if our drivers shut down for two days, you know, we'll start seeing the impact immediately at the grocery stores. Um, and then you start going longer and it's just, just the how quickly we would not have literally everything that we touch uh, got to us on a truck, whether it's a class A, class A, class B, you know, box truck, uh, 53, whatever it is. I mean, it got to us on wheels. Um, and so if we don't have our trucks out there, I mean, our, our lives change drastically and in a hurry too. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Everything we've got looked around, it came on a truck to some point. Now we might've gotten to a store, 
to pick it up or something, but it got there on a truck at some point in time. So it's definitely very, very vital to our economy. And, you know, you and I were talking a little bit about hiring and recruiting and so forth. And you mentioned something to me. You mentioned a bait and switch that is happening in recruiting at many companies, unfortunately. Can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah, the bait and switch. I mean, and again, it's it's not not always intentional. Sometimes sometimes stuff just happens. But what uh, what I've experienced is a lot of times there will be a driver that has has spoken to a recruiting team, um, and when they they get lined up for a position with certain home time, with certain pay expectations, with certain truck expectations, with certain um, you know all the all the things that you look for in a job, and when they get there into orientation. Next thing you know, that truck's not there, or it's not really that position, or the pay is different, or this isn't included, or there are those those key components of a job that just don't exist anymore. And, um, but we do have this thing over here that you could go do instead. Well, you put yourself in that driver situation; um, they just you know quit a job because of what you know your your company has told them. Um, they made a move; they made a life choice based off of the expectations of what they were led to believe. And you get there and next thing you know, they either don't have a job or they have to do something that they don't or didn't intend to do. Um, and it's just kind of getting back to what we talked about, the White House lawn. It, it does not help our industry. Um, you know, you have enough of that. People are going to stub their toe and they're going to want to get out because if they have that experience often enough, unfortunately, the, the thought then becomes, well, everybody's this way. Is that true? No, there's more companies are not that, that this doesn't happen at, but it's still unfortunately one of those things that does happen to get people in the door to, to, to some companies. Right. Absolutely. And I think you'd mentioned to me also, you guys are in a hiring mode. Is that right? So we, we are, we are. Yeah. So we, we do uh, hire and contract all across the Midwest, Southeast, um, Northeast, we've got uh, positions that we we do target. Uh, we're very uh, specific with our positions. So when you do talk with our team, you know exactly the lane you're getting into. Um, and then you also know that, hey, if, if something here does change, here's the other options that we do have. And we know all of that prior to uh, showing up for, for orientation. So we try to be as very upfront with the expectations. Um, in fact, even part of our, our process here to bring someone on board, uh, we do have a talk with the direct manager of the of the terminal that you'll be assigned out of. So that way you can have any of those conversations that you want to have with the person that will be overseeing your day to day um, part of what you're you're going to be driving for us over here at Grammar. Awesome. Love it. So, you know, you and I were talking a little bit about driver feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us how you're using driver feedback to improve operations at Grammar Logistics? Yeah, so driver feedback is a is a uh, you've you've got to have it. I mean, there's there's no way around that statement. If you truly do care and are truly invested in making your drivers' lives um, better, uh, which I believe the 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 good companies out here are are trying to do, it's a it's a tough job. But we as companies do have to do everything we can to make sure that we take a tough job and make it as manageable as we can. Um, and driver feedback is a key component of that. There's lots of ways to do it. Um, there's there's um, anonymous surveys that go out on a, a frequent basis. Um, I've, I, in my past, I've used WorkHound quite a bit to get that anonymous feedback in, in virtual or real time, uh, which really helps to get to the root cause of an issue in a hurry. Uh, because a lot of times if you wait too long before you ask those questions, um, drivers tend to forget. I mean, I know if you asked me in, in three months how I felt about this moment three months ago, I, I probably wouldn't remember. I mean, I'd probably remember being excited talking with you, excited to, to be be on the show with you. Um, but everything else around it, I, I wouldn't recall that. But if you hit me up tomorrow, I'm like, yeah, I remember my time with Andy. This is great. Um, so getting to the, 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 the closeness of the event um, that causes those those moments of doubt in your driver's mind is is critical toward your long term success. So over here, at Grammar, we we again have a very very hands on uh, retention program. Most of our 
most of our uh, drivers are either in or out of the terminal uh, daily, every other day, every two or three days at most. We don't have a lot of drivers that are, are just out there gone um, for a long time. It's just not the way our network is set up. So we have a lot of just in-person feedback, a lot of interaction with our terminal managers, a lot of interaction with our lead drivers at each terminal that are responsible for training the the new drivers that that join us over here in the, the grammar team. Um, the, our drivers take a very vested impro- approach to making sure that our new drivers are successful. So we have this really interesting, really great uh, network of feedback that literally start within our drivers that bubbles up through our, our internal communication channels. But as a terminal manager, we've got um, one gentleman uh, who's, who's uh, job is really to make sure i'm going to his, his title is director of retention but he he does so much more than that his job is to help that driver out of orientation make sure that they get connected with their terminal managers make sure they connect get connected with their trainers uh because again we we, we haul a very specialized commodity so we have to make sure that proper training is completed. So he ensures that all that's done. He ensures that all the, the state licensing, if we have something unique about Texas, he makes sure that that driver has what they need to be successful in those tests. And so he really does a lot of that that frontline, hey, recruiting brought you to here. We we did the transition through the orientation process, but now here, I'm going to help you get acclimated. I'm going to help you get to your lead drivers, your lead your terminal managers get to your truck, get you into your business and full understanding before we, we say, all right, here you go. You're, you're good to go. And then we rely on our terminal managers and the relationships that we have with our fleet. And I'd say that's, that's a, a direct uh, reason as to why we've got a very, very low turnover rate. I mean, we've got a phenomenal turnover rate. It's, it's, it's incredibly low. Um, and again, I just think it's because of how much care that we, we put into each individual that, that joins us over here. Um, and we hear, we listen to them. If they have challenges with operations or challenges with with customers, um, we actually have got a fleet of drivers here that starts our new business for us. So that way, in those conversations between sales and our customers, the actual front line uh, of how that business gets implemented into Grammar uh, gets dictated by our lead drivers because they go in there and they know, hey, this is a new account. We know that we're going to have to be more patient. We know we're going to have to ask more questions. Let's fully understand this business before we start onboarding, you know, new drivers for a new account. Let's make sure we get a we get a good handle for it like before we we start bringing in people for stuff we don't know everything about yet. So it it starts with our drivers. It's just the nature of our culture starting at that ground level, and then it it bubbles up through through uh, the rest of us over here on the grammar team. Right, absolutely. You mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned driver turnover, low driver turnover. You also mentioned kind of smooth onboarding of new accounts and clients. Um, I was wanting to hear, you know, what are two or three kind of key positive things that you're seeing happen from the driver feedback loop that you're talking about here? Well, the the driver feedback loop, you know, some of the, some of the key things are drivers can, they know that they can bring us an issue and they know that they're going to be heard. They know that we're going to listen. They know that we're going to take action upon that request. Um, and then that translates really into, you know, my biggest win, and that's uh, referrals. Our biggest source of new hires over here are referrals. And that happens because my drivers here know that our company is going to take care of them. And if you weren't at a company that that didn't have that, then they wouldn't be referring. Uh, they'd be leaving. And you wouldn't see the tenure rate that we have here. Um, so it, it really kind of, you know, the two or three things I'd say really come back with the the culture that our drivers have formed um, and ultimately referrals and, and new grammar drivers referred by our, our existing fleet. Absolutely. Yeah, culture is key. And sounds like you guys are doing a great job in retaining and in bringing in new uh, referral um, drivers as well. So that's awesome. Um, what are the best ways for people to connect with you or your company, Josh? I'd say the the best way for our company is go to our website. Um, you find us at grammarlogistics.com. Uh, see all the all the good things that we've got going on out there. Um, and then for me personally, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm active on there. Um, you can find me uh, there. Get my contact information is all on my LinkedIn profile. Absolutely. Well, I want to say thanks again for coming on the show today. This is awesome content. I think these are some very key 
topics for the trucking industry. And I appreciate you coming on to share your insights. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, Andy. Absolutely. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Trucking Tower Podcast. Thanks for listening or watching, everyone. And we will see you again soon. Take care, everybody.